What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brill Shocker, the 90s Hedgehog here with our RGBL Season 3 team. For me, it's the third season. I believe it's the fourth season. But the first season, they really said they didn't count because it was just a mess season. It was just a fun season. But then they started taking it seriously from Season 2. So that was our Season 1. So this is our third season. Third time, can it be the charm for us? We made playoffs the first time. Second time, we missed playoffs just off of a win. And now we have another chance to make the playoffs again. So I'm hoping to make a playoff push and hopefully we can do well. This team I have is very interesting. Definitely different from what I normally have. But it's going to be very interesting in the list. But if you guys can, hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to join the Fish Shocker crew today. Because you'd be frilling with the king of the crew. So we had, I believe, it was 16 coaches? 12 or 16 coaches. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's 16. Because we're doing an 11-week season. So, yeah, it's 16. But I actually had the number two pick. So, I basically was guaranteed something I really want. And then, synergistically, I can pair things well with each other if I really wanted to as well. So, let's go ahead and just get into this. Like I said, if I haven't, already, if I haven't said it already, like, comment, share, subscribe. Join the first record today because you're the king of the crew. So, let's go ahead and break down this team. So, I had the second pick, like I already said. And there was one mod I wanted to try. This mod has busted broken speed. Do I agree its moveset coverage is limited? It is because if it had more, it would have been ubers like that. If you heard my fingers, that was my snap. So my first pick, it is none other than Circuits, the Reggie Alecki. Now, why did I go with this one? First off, this was in Tier 1. I want to say that right now, this was in Tier 1. So I went for a Tier 1 pick my first round. So what does Reggie Alecki offer me here? First off, really good electric type. I mean, I know base special... Of 100 for both its stabs in attack and defense, but that yeah. attack and special attack aren't the greatest, but could still be really good. Yes, I think it's really still good. This thing is a very big powerhouse, though. If this thing starts rolling, like 200 speed forces so many choice scarfers, allows me to easily out out scarf base 110s, which is crazy enough with running a timid nature. So like I can pretty much do that. Once I get rid of ground types, Reggie Alecki can just spam electric moves because if you guys don't know what Transistor does, we already have bait. It's basically like an instant choice specs on electric type moves. And then slap another choice specs. You can literally have two choice specs on this thing and basically just nuke something. That is just crazy to me how good this Pokemon can really, really be. Um, I have great potential and hopes for Reggie Alecki. I'm really looking forward to using this thing. And I'm really hoping that we can try it good and enjoy it. So when it came down, there was a lot of things I kind of wanted. Tangrowth was off of this board with Prime Time. I really kind of wanted Tangrowth. There were a couple of things I really, really wanted. But then I was looking back, okay, how do I help Reggie Lucky deal with certain mods? And then a certain mod was still on the board that I really, really love. And it's by far my favorite Rotom form to use. And it's one of my most successful Rotom forms to use as well. In Rotom Heat. Rotom Elite, aka it's lit. Um, Rotom Heat for me is one of, if not the best Rotom form in this generation, aka just in period. Because what's really, really great about Rotom Heat is again the Levitate Access, which is really, really good. But just in general, it's such a great defensive back mode mon. Is a really good like clay abuser? Is a really good abuser of Willow as toxic hex shenanigans? Nasty plot this generation gives you basically two free overheats to use up instead of one. Which is really good. Also, really good pivoter with Volt Switch. So, I've got some Volt Switch covering going right now. I really, really love Rotom Heat. I'm really excited to try it again. Now, you may think this is a regular Zapdos, but to prepare with Rotom Heat, I got Galarian Zapdos. Yes, Galarian sprites are not fully updated yet, just yet. So, they'll be currently just taking this, but they have their own little official artwork sprites of this stuff already, which already, that's probably really sick. But I went with Galarian Zapdos. This thing is arguably going to be one of the best mons in this generation now since it's, it's been introduced. And I really was going to hope and try to get this and try this thing. I personally do love Galarian Zapdos. It's probably my favorite of the three to want to use. So I'm very excited to try it. Um, Galarian Zapdos, you guys, base 125 attack is just busted. It's going to be such a very big problem. And what's super great about this mod is Defiant. Defiant forces Intimidators to be very careful switching in on me. It also forces the fact of Sticky Webs being a problem. Because I can just pretty much run a choice ban on this thing and just click a button. But this thing is going to be so good. I'm really looking forward to this thing. It does have access to U-Turn, 
which is also a really good pivoter. So I've got Volturn right now, which is also really good. So I'm just really looking forward to using my Zapdos here, and I'm really hoping we do well with it. Up next, we have a Mon I have not used in so long. I don't think I've ever used this thing in Gen 8 just yet, but it is Rose Raid. Rose Raid is so good. Um, Rose Raid did some nerfs with not having him power and not being able to really use Natural Cure, not, not Natural Cure, Technician to its fullest anymore. But nonetheless, Natural Cure is really good as a status with Zorber Sep. There is the option of running potential Poison Point for Poison Shenanigans. This thing does give me access to Spikes and Toxic Spikes, which is really good and supports my team really well. Give me base 90 speed, which is about average good speed that I need between some of my mons. Give me a really good, decently spadef wall. Um, a really great offensive mon as well with choice specs. And right now we're looking a bit weak to ground types, but I got a flying type. We got a levitator. I have a grass type that can kind of scare them, so we have a hero. But we got you Mega Swampert last time. Let's change it up. Now let's go for Normal Swampert. Normal Swampert got massive buffs, which made Mega Swampert get massive buffs. Access to bulk up Darkest Lair. It gives me a stealth rocker now as well. Very, very good as well. And this, I think Mega Swampert still is going to be really, really good. If you see the rest of my team, Grass types is a problem for it. But pretty much all I have to really worry about is Freeze Ride. I'm not really scared of Grass types versus my team. And you'll see why as the picks keep going. But overall, I think Swampert's going to be super, super good. It gives me a reliable rocker. If I want to bring rocks, it can be a reliable setup mod if I really want with bulk up. Darkest Lair, it's actually got counters to things like Slowbro, which is really, really good as well. I just overall think that this is going to be a very great mod to use in Draft League, and I'm really excited to try it. Now, normally this was um, a Noivern, but the reason why I got rid of Noivern was I had a Flying type already, and I didn't think I really wanted having a major Ice weakness with having two Flying types. So what I basically decided to do is I decided to get Fly God, which was still on the board, give me a second Ground type, which is really, really good, because... Having two ground types is not necessarily a bad thing, but apparently, especially when they're kind of different. Yes, they're both weak to freeze dry, but they kind of have two separate weaknesses. It can take on grass types while Swampert can't. But I want to fly on fly on. Got a lot of big buffs this generation, getting access to Scorching Sands, which now makes special fly on sets very, very reliable to use now. I'm very scared to use as well as so choice advantage of choice specs and stuff like that. But I'm really excited to try fly on again. Base 100 speed again, so I got a lot of speed on my side right now, so looking really, really good. So, next up, I went and picked up for the third time now, well, not the third time, but my third time we're trying this is Vanillix. Um, I'm going to give Vanillix one more try here. Um, I haven't found the magic with Vanillix like Joey does, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try, but Vanillix is really good because it acts as a Aurora Veil. Aurora Veil is really, like, scary versus my team. Like, if... If you really, like, look at my team, if Aurora Veil is up, my team pretty much can plow through teams. And the reason why I have Vanillix as well, because Blizzard Spam is very, very, very good in this format, where there is limited stuff that can really ping. Like, even Steel types really don't want to take Blizzard hits, depending on what they have. But, again, I pretty much picked this thing up for Aurora Veil, and plus you'll see as my last pick. You can see we're there. But up next, we picked up Spirit Tomb Ectoplasma here. And I have never drafted Spirit Tomb. I drafted it, actually, well, I'll say this. I drafted it one time, but I never, ever really used it. And, like, up one week. But I want to Spirit Tomb again. Spirit Tomb is a very great defensive bond and can be offensively good as well. The only problem with Spirit Tomb is mostly just HP because it's not going to be as bulky unless you run max HP and then pretty much almost max defense on this thing. But nonetheless, it does provide pressure, which is really good for PP stalling on moves as well. It gives me access to a will of user and a Hex user as well. And it gives me that very important Dark type so you don't lose to Psychic type. So I think Spirit Tomb overall is going to be really good. I'm really excited to try it. And it's been one mod I've never really used, so it's really good. Armaldo, I'm not going to really talk about Armaldo. And I forgot to name him, but he's going to name the clans. But you know why are we getting him? So basically, my final pick is a little Sand Slash. I have used this one Slash like once or twice for um, Saint Hail teams. I know my buddy Zach ain't going to like this, but I'm going to try a miniature hail offensive team. And Sandslash, getting access to things like Triple Axle is really good. Ice Soul Crash is still really good. You get access to Spikes, which is really good as well. And I think I also got access to Body Press this generation. No, we did not. Okay. But still, a very good offensive mon in hail, which is really good. Dual Stab hits a pretty much strong amount of everything in the format. So, really excited. And my boy Ice Pick here is ready to try, but... 
If anyways, that's going to be it for the team builder guy. Team builder. Drop the analysis, like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys in week one. Until next time, guys, I'm Phil Shocker and I say Tejog. Peace.